There's something so nice about the seemingly simple practice of farming and agriculture, yet also something dissatisfying about taking a question as big as, where do we get our food, and providing such a simple answer, like the grocery store or a farm. There has to be more to know about how our food is grown and how it can be optimized. Considering the fact that resources such as space and water are becoming more scarce, it is more important than ever to ask questions and rethink agriculture. So I decided to explore the subject myself by creating a high-tech mini-growery for microgreens. I wanted to explore automation and resource management. I specifically wanted to explore building software that can handle those things better than any human, and even improve and learn over time. With home automation becoming a norm, with products like Nest and Apple HomeKit, I wanted to see how I could apply that theory to optimize agriculture on a scale I could work with. To start, I had to build the actual structure that would become the growery. I acquired a small 23 inch by 47 inch corner of my house. The footprint is small, but I knew I could make the most of it by working upwards. I got to work designing right away in SketchUp so I could get a sense of the scale and work out any design kinks. I usually don't like to design in SketchUp, but my computer can't screen grab and run Fusion 360 at the same time. Anyways, I made up the basic frame where a couple important design choices were already made. The first one is the spacing of the shelves. There are three racks with only 6 inch spacing and three with 12 inch spacing. The shallow racks are meant to be used when the microgreens are germinating and don't require any light. The three taller racks are meant to accommodate a lighting system above the microgreens so they can grow to their final stage. So the shelf needs to be taller to accommodate the light. There's also an 18 inch space below the rack to house equipment such as water reservoirs, pumps, and the computer. Another design choice is the use of 2x3s to actually form the structure. I used 2x3s because they are cheap and easy to work with. The material itself doesn't really offer any benefits and is probably one of the worst materials for the job considering the high moisture environment. But again, this is a prototype so I had to build it on a tight budget and time frame. At this point, you can kind of see how the basic design will work. I started playing around with the location of the control panels on the sides, as well as ventilation fans for each shelf. I also drafted the location of each 1020 tray on the shelves. In total, the growery will be able to accommodate 21 trays at any given moment. That's a total of nearly 30 square feet of growing space. I made a cut list from the draft and cut all the pieces of 2x3. I created the front and back of the structure first. Then I attached those two face frames with cross beams. As you can see at this point all of the cross beams are in and it looks pretty good. All I had to do now was waterproof it and add more supports in the middle. I needed to do something to protect the 2x3s from moisture and isolate each shelf so I could control the parameters individually. I started the moisture proofing process by painting the entire structure brown, just because I had a brown exterior paint left over from a previous project. I ended up doing a total of two coats, which makes a good basic moisture sealer to protect the wood. I then wrapped the entire structure in polypropylene drop cloth. It is very cheap highly available, and I like that it's a little bit translucent. The only problem with it is that not many glues stick well to polypropylene, so I had to buy a specialty glue and staple the plastic in. I made each shelf isolated from the others so that I could individually tweak things like moisture and temperature for experimentation. The plastic basically seals each compartment so that the wood is safe and it is isolated from the outside. I want to experiment with watering the plants with an automated mister, so I need an airtight environment like this one. Thanks for watching. There's more videos coming in the future about this project, so please subscribe. You can also check out some of my past videos. Part 2 of the microgreens project is going to be about making and installing the LED grow lights, so click here if you want to watch it. Thanks for watching.